Okay, now we are back on page two. Oh, I didn't get very far last time, did I? Okay, part D. Account business combinations using the acquisition method. That's all we're going to use. Here are the main ideas that you want to think about or remember for the acquisition method when accounting for business combinations. The acquirer or entity that attains control of one or more businesses should be identified for all business combinations. The purchase is made in cash. It is clear which company is the acquirer. When you purchase using shares, the final percent of ownership must be calculated to determine which party is the actual acquirer or the parent. If the percentages are equal, and we're going to do an example of this, don't worry, then factors such as which company is issuing the shares, the size of the company, and the desire of the new shareholders to be involved in company policy and operational decisions should be considered. So there's really three things here. If the percentages are equal, factors which company is issuing the shares is important. The size of the company, that's the second thing and whether or not they're involved. That's the third thing. When we say size large is more likely. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Second thing is the acquisition date is the date the acquirer parent obtains control, acquiree, or subsidiary. The acquirer should measure fair value of the acquiree based on the fair value of consideration given by the controlling shareholders plus fair value of either non-controlling shares or non-control sorry non-controlling shareholders proportionate share oh that's a lot of stuff you know what we're not even going to do that we don't know what NCI is yet but let's just put that later so don't muddy your brain up with this the acquirer should reflect the identify apps assets and acquired at fair value separately from Goodwill, so that's going to be a separate account. Now, there's one other thing you should watch for. So uh, this applies to the rest of the course, because all of this stuff, you guys, is leading to the rest of the course. So watch for intangible assets. not listed on the subs financial statements for example patents leases customer lists customer service contracts etc. These will be added to the balance sheet. Okay, on page three, said if you buy shares you have to figure out who the acquirer is. Okay, I'm going to show you an example of what I mean with that. So, here are account balances for three companies on January 1st, year 2. Company A, B, Company C, D, Company E, F. Now, the number of shares, and that's of their own common shares, is 100,000, 40,000, and 50,000. So these are CD shares, these are EF shares. And here's the size of the company based on assets, the companies. So, company AB is going to buy the net assets, so assets and liabilities, of company CD and EF by issuing shares to the company. Now, they're going to pay these guys with their own shares, okay? So I'm just going to draw it out. So AB is going to give CD AB shares and they're going to buy 
the net assets. And AB is going to give EF their own shares for their net assets. So, they're going to give 8,000 to CD and 100 to EF of their own shares. Okay? We want to know who the actual acquiring company is. So, you don't have to do it this um, detailed. You guys can just do a little math formula if you're asked this on an exam. So, owner of AB um, shares. So, there's going to be, after this, there's going to be AB shareholders, CD shareholders. and EF shareholders. Now let's look at the number of AB shares after the acquisition. Well, AB shareholders, how many do they still own? Well, they started with 100,000, so they're going to keep 100,000 it's the same. Now CD shareholders, then actually I should just put the company, let's cross out those shareholders, CD company. Okay, because they're not giving them shares, they're giving them net assets. So, after the acquisition, how many of AB shares does CD have? Well, how many did they get? Well, 80,000. Does that make sense? And EF, after the acquisition, they have 100,000 shares of AB. So, who actually owns the companies? AB owns 100,000 shares. Their shareholders own 100,000, but they just gave EF 100,000. So who has equal control with them? EF, okay? So that's when we run into a problem of figuring out who the acquirer is because two people own the same percent. So you can't say with certainty either one owns more. So I'm just going to calculate percent owned. Usually you don't have to on a question when you obviously have two people splitting, but um, you also can and it makes it clear, I think. So the percent owned. In total, how many AB shares are out there? 280,000. So these guys, AB shareholders, own 100 out of 280, which is 36%, which we know here. Now CD has only 80 out of 280, so you can either subtract or do whatever you want to get the 28%. The important thing is they add up to 100. And you notice that these two people or companies own the same amount. Okay? So let's try and figure that out. So who is the acquirer? Okay, because what these guys just did is give this company EF, they got their assets, but now they gave them equal control over that. So, two companies have tied highest. Highest percentage. So we ask ourselves, 
who issued the shares. Remember there were those three things on the last page? Who issued shares? Who is the biggest? And by biggest, it depends. Just use whatever they give you. I gave you um, assets. We could have done, broken it down by net income, net assets, uh, shareholder total, anything like that. Just use whatever they give you. And we, the third one is who wants to run the company. So, we're looking between these two. Who issued the shares? AB. Who's the biggest company? Well, if we're basing it on assets, the only nation we have, it's AB. Now, did EF in particular express any desire in this question to run the company and influence the policies and make decisions? No, they didn't say anything. So what do you conclude from our little discussion here? Who is the acquirer? Who actually owns and runs things? Well, these are tied, but because AB issued the shares and they're the biggest, AB is. AB is the acquirer. So take a second and look at that. Make sure it makes sense. <coughs> Pause it if you Okay, now, let's say AB had acquired EF and owned more, okay? So they were at 60% and they only had 40 CD for a second. You just had two companies, these guys bought EF, but paid for shares with their shares, and in these guys had 60 and that's 40. Who's the acquirer? This is 40 and CD doesn't exist. Well, it's EF. EF is the acquirer. So even though it was stated as AB did the issuance, it's so not the issuance, AB did the acquiring, in actuality, EF is the acquirer. And that would be a reverse takeover, okay? That's a reverse takeover. You can read more about it in the chapter, but it's it's just, it be structured a, as a sale in a certain way for tax purposes, for business purposes, that kind of thing, okay? So that's determining who the acquirer is. Um, generally only do this step when the parent paid with shares and if the question asks for it. Okay, so every question you do, don't try and do this step. Um, usually it'll just ask you for it, determine the acquirer but um, this is how you do it. In real life, of course, you'd have to do this on every step. Although by the time you got here to these steps, you'd know what you were doing, if you were the acquirer. Okay, last thing before I shut this off. Okay, so that's determining the acquirer. Now we're looking at acquisition cost. Obviously, it's any cash paid. The fair value of assets transferred, so if we gave you our shares. Present value of any promises to pay cash in the future. So, you know, at the end of the year, we'll give you another $2 million, something like that. And you take the present value. The fair value of any shares issued. So up here, where they issued shares, we base the cost or the price on the market price of the shares and the acquisition date. So that's important. Sometimes questions say, Oh, the average price was twelve thirty-five during the year. They say on January first, which was the acquisition date, they were twelve eighty-five. Always use the acquisition date. Now, the other thing that goes into the acquisition cost 
the fair value of contingent consideration. You're basically going to see chapter 4 uh, for that. We won't talk about it a whole lot. But let's say if we wanted to keep everybody working hard in the company we just took over, we could um, offer a bonus payment to shareholders or something. So for example, if net income goes up by 10% again, yet we give extra money to shareholders or something like that. Acquisition costs do not include the fees of consultants, accountants, and lawyers that don't increase the fair value of the acquired company. So for example, that would be a debit legal expenses and a credit to cash or whatever. The same way, so they're expensed in the period of acquisition. Now the cost of issuing debt or shares are not included in the acquisition cost, but are charged to the related debt or share capital. For example, if in order to pay, we issued shares, we would debit common shares, credit cash for the cost of issuing shares. And for debt, we debit bonds payable, let's say it was bonds, and credit cash. So both of these are not expenses. So watch for that. You'll see that all the time in uh, examples. Okay, I'm going to switch over and then we're going to start our examples.